Hi, this is Fassad from HumanElement.com and today we're going to be talking about how to manipulate points on the spline using nulls and also using a little bit of espresso to control the nulls to give them random movement. So kind of what we're going for is a, a wiggle uh, effect, kind of what you get in After Effects if you're familiar with expressions using a wiggle expression. And it gives you random movement. Uh, for instance, let me play this here. So here's uh, an example, not the best example, but as you can see, uh, this was created using two keyframes and the points themselves on the spline are being uh, randomly moved by a noise node uh, using Expresso. So um, let's get started and uh, let's see what we can uh, accomplish here. So let's get started with a circle and a rectangle. All right, let's move the rectangle down. And right now these two objects are parametric objects, meaning that if we go to the left side here, you'll see if I click on points, there are no points that show up. We have to actually convert this into an object. So click on this icon, and now you'll see that you get points, okay? So we're gonna be using a spline mask. And basically what the spline mask does is, is allows you to take two different splines and one of the splines will mask the other. So for instance, let's create the mask here and put these two objects that we made into the mask. And now if we select the rectangle and drag it up, you'll see that it acts as a mask, okay? And there's some options here under spline mask to uh, under mode. Let me move the rectangle up again. Okay, right now the they're both being combined. But if we go under the mode, and so uh, let's go to A intersect B. Now we just get the bottom part of the circle being masked by the rectangle. We change it to subtract A. We just get the the rectangle minus the circle, okay, and so on. So we're going to leave this at A intersect B, and we're going to turn off the mask for now. All right, just uncheck it. All right, so select the rectangle and go back to points, and we're going to focus on the top curve. There's two points that make up the top curve. We need some more points in order to add this movement in here, okay? So what we want to do is select the two points, go to Mesh, Commands, go to Subdivide in the Option box, and let's uh, give it four subdivisions and press OK. So now that gives us three additional um, points, and it gives us one, two, three, four subdivisions, okay? So, as an example, uh, I'm sure there's plenty of ways that we're going to try to, that you can achieve what I'm trying to do, uh, and I'm going to show you one way that I thought it would work, but it doesn't work to give us this uh, random movement, and that's by using the, uh, go under your deformers and use the formula deformer. This, uh, this formula deformer has a sign formula, which will move uh, uh, the points in a, uh, using a sine wave. So we click on that formula and drag it in the rectangle. You'll see that we get the spline to move. All right. So that's using a sine formula. But the thing is, is that if we use, if we turn on the spline mass, the rectangle, as you can see, has disappeared. So that's no, that's no use for us. And I want to make myself really clear here. Uh, if you're not familiar with the spline mass, the spline mass is really cool. So let's uh, get rid of this formula for now. Let's uh, click on the spline mass and let's make a an extrude nerve, extrude nerve, sorry, and place that spline mass in, inside the extrude nerves. All right. Let's see there. All right. So now it's inside. So with a spline mass, you can make all these cool objects. So here we just use an extrude nerves and we can uh, go into the nerves and uh, under caps and give it a, a fillet and do a fillet cap and you can see we just created a you know uh, an object here with with fillet caps just using this, using the spline mass and again you can click on the spline mass and do a you know different mode here A B and B now they're added and now it's attractive so you can do all these cool things with it. Um, so if we place this formula deformer inside the rectangle again, all right, and remember 
when we turned off the supply mask, we can see it moving. It's not, it's not moving because it's not on, but let's turn it on. You can see it moving, but now we turn the supply mask on, it disappears. So we don't get anything out of that formula. Um, if there's a way to do this, I'm not sure how to do it, but um, this is why we're doing it the way I'm going to show you. So we get rid of the formula, deformer, all right, hide the extrude nerves, and hide the mask. So let's select the rectangle, and we're going to create nulls to attach to these points, okay? So let's go ahead and create, we need five nulls because we have five points so let's go one two three four and five all right and we need to put these nulls um, name these according to the index points that are uh, according to the, the points index number of the points um, the way you find out what the index numbers are if you select the rectangle again you can go under the structure manager under window all right, and you select um, the first point. That index number is zero. The second one is one, two, three, and four. So we go zero through four. Let's go back to the objects menu, and we're going to name these nulls according to uh, corresponding to those numbers. So the first one's going to be null underscore zero. Now this is only important just to you know keep us organized. So name the second one. Null 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the rest are already named for us. Uh, I like to have underscores here instead of dots. That's just me. I'm just going to change them real quick. So we have five nulls, and they're all named according to the index points of those, uh, index number of the points. All right, so now that we have those nulls, they're all points right now. Let's change the, the way they look under display. Select all the nulls, and where it says display, go to dot, and let's change them to a diamond just so we can see them a little better and increase the radius a little bit. Now we can see them. And then select your move tool and enable snapping under snap settings. Enable snap 3D and points. Okay, so we're going to select the first null and just drag to the side until it snaps to the end here. That's going to be null zero it is attached down to uh, your zero point. Select the second one, drag until you click on the second, which is that one right there, the second point. And then grab the third null, and that should be the third point. And grab the third one, same thing, just snap, move it till it snaps. There you go, it just snapped right there. And the fourth one, move to the side, and snap it to the end. All right, so we select the rectangle. These are all lined up to the points now. So select your move tool again, and just uncheck enable snapping. All right, so now that we have these in position, the nulls, now we need to uh, connect these to the actual points on the spline. Okay, so we're going to do that using Espresso. And uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and select all. Let's go ahead and make a new null. Call this uh, master null or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to select the five nulls that we first created and drag them into the master null. So now this master null has control over all of the nulls. That's going to become useful here in a little bit. All right. So now on the master null, right click and go, you can't see it on my menu here, but if you right click, go all the way to the right, and all the way down, you'll see, let's see if I can move it a little more, I'll move this window here, yeah, there you go, right click, go all the way down to Expresso, it's going to give you that little icon, that means you are in Expresso now, in the editor, so, let's go ahead and bring the, four, the five nulls into, actually don't bring five, just bring one. I'll show you a little trick here. Bring one of the nulls down, all right, and then we need to bring our rectangle into the editor as well. All right, so 
we need to have, find a node that will allow us to connect the a node that will, will allow us to connect the null to the node uh, to the points. I'm sorry. So that node is if you right click inside an empty space here, the node we're looking for is called a point node. So it's under new node, expresso, general. And let me move this up again. New node, expresso, general. And it's called point. All right. So this is going to give us access to controlling the points on the spline. So left click on the blue icon. And what you want is the point position. Okay. It wasn't shown before, but if you uh, left click and then select point position, it will pop up just like it did here. And then we need to find a way to connect the object to the rectangle. So left click on the red box and click on object. Okay. And then we need to go ahead and connect the object to the object of the point. And then for the point position, we need to connect that to the global position of the null. Okay, so left click on the red box and go down to coordinates and go down to move this over again. Coordinates, position, and sorry, global position. You want to select global position. Okay. So there you go. And now you want to connect the global position to the point position. All right, once you do that, let's see what we have up here in our viewport. Select null zero, which is null zero here. As you can see, we've just attached that null to that point. Okay, so we're going to repeat this for the rest of these, and here's a shortcut to do, to do this. So we don't have to go through all that five different, four more times. You want to do is select all three of these objects, and then hold down the control key, and left click and drag, and you'll get a new set of nodes here okay so again that was let me undo that that was select all three of these and then control hold down control keep it uh, keep it held down and then just left click drag and you'll get a new set of nodes all right once you have that select uh, your null number one and drag that on top of the null zero as you can see it just changed to null one okay now the other important thing, remember in the structure manager, uh, these points were, were numbered, uh, index numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the first point note that we made, that's automatically numbered to 0. So once we duplicated this, the second point note that we need should be 1, but because we duplicated it, it's 0. So what you want is just select it and change this to 1. Okay, And just like that, this null now, if you select null 1, is connected to that point. Okay, so we're going to repeat this process three more times. All right, so select the three uh, nodes and control click and drag, and then grab your null number two and drag it on top of null one and change the point to two for the point node. All right, so grab them again, control click and left, control and left click, drag, and then Drag null one for three on top of null two. That didn't work. Let's try it again. Let's see. Three. Sorry. One more time. Three. And move all these up a little bit. And we're going to change this point to three. And then we're going to do it one more time. It's a little repetitive, but it's okay. All right. Change the point to four, and then. Grab null 4 and drag it on top of this null, and that changes to 4. So let's just confirm that these are all attached. Start with 4, null 4, null 3 works, null 2 is working, right? Yep. Null 1 is working, perfect. And we already checked the other one. All right. So cool. So now we have them attached. Now we need to give them the random movement. And that movement is going to be made create it using another node. So click in an empty, on an empty area here. Go to new node, Espresso, general, and go to noise. All right, so we're going to use a noise node to give us back to null, zero, left click, coordinate, position, position Y. 
and then attach the noise to position Y. So as you can see in the window here, it moved up. And in order to make this give it some random movement, let's select the noise node and then increase the frequency a little bit and increase the amplitude. And you're going to start to see it. It's going to start moving on its own. Okay? So there's one node attached. So we're going to do this to the other five or four. So let's go to null one and left click and go to position, position Y. Same thing with null two. Position, position Y. Repeat that again. And one more time. I'm going to go to the coordinates, position, position Y. All right. So I'm going to make a copy of this noise node again by holding down control, select the noise, hold on control and left click and drag. All right. Do that three more times. Let's try and move that down. And one more time. So each one of these nulls is going to have its own noise node. There's probably an easier way to perhaps have one noise node and then have a different node to give all of these a random movement uh, through one noise node. Uh, I'm not sure what the setup is on that, but I'm sure there's probably a way to do it. But I'm just going to use five, uh, four different or five different noise nodes to, to uh, create what I want to create. So uh, let's go ahead and attach this one to the nulls position Y. You can see it's going to start moving again. It's moving the same because it's a this noise du uh, node is a, is a duplicate of the first one, so we're going to have to change the frequency, some of these settings here, amplitude, maybe increase that a little bit, and now they're starting to move a little different. Same thing with this one. Connect this one to position Y, and then change its settings to something totally different here. And repeat that two more times. Let's change the settings for this noise node. And one more time, we're going to change the settings for this one. All right, so if we bring this down, you'll see that there's a nice random movement now going on. All right, so the other thing is uh, that doesn't look right is that this is uh, the rectangle, the paths are, are, are linear. You know, they're pretty straight. So we can easily fix that. Select the rectangle and then change the type to Bezier. And now you get this nice smooth curve, okay? All right, so now let's turn on the spline mask. And what's cool about doing it this way, this setup is that by turning this on, you'll see that the rectangular mask is working as it should, and the spline mask works as well. And then we turn on the extrude nerves, you'll see that that is also working which is pretty neat. Okay, so now let's make this a little more, uh, let's give this a little more oomph, I guess. Let's uh, add some text in here and replace the circle. Okay, so I'm going to stop the playhead here. And let's go to text and let's uh, create, let's make something new. So I'm going to type in H and E. Okay, which means human element. And I'm going to scale this text up quite a bit, maybe up to here. And I'm going to bring the text down. All right, so I'm going to put the text inside the spine mass right underneath the rectangle. So I'm going to basically replace the circle, just hide the circle. All right, so now, as you can see, now we have something different going on. Click on your spine mask and Let's select a different, I think it's A intersect B. There we go, that's what we want. So let's play this again. And as you can see, we're starting to get what uh, the example that I showed you in the beginning. All right, so now what we want to do is select your master null, all right? That is the master null that moves all the nulls. And let's stop this time, let's play it again. Let's bring it underneath. Let's go uh, down on the Y and click on coordinates, master null coordinates, and control click on the position Y in this little circle. 
you got a keyframe. Let's move up 200 frames and let's move up all the way to the top. And then control click on that little circle again. So now we get this kind of moving. And it looks really nice. All right, so I'm sure there's a lot more you can do with this, but this is pretty much the setup. Okay, and if you need to scale the uh, the rectangle a little bit, just scale it using the master null. We're gonna go up here, scale the master null to the side a little bit. That way your mass will increase uh, on the x. Scale on the x, and then let's play that. And that's you know in case you have a a bigger word. Uh, a, a wider word that you might want to use, you can do that. So, yeah. And those caps are being respected too. You can see the caps are there. So, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the setup. I hope you uh, learned a little bit of something here and uh, I hope this comes in handy for you. So, excellent. Um, that's about it, guys. I just want to let you know that I do have a uh, if you go to my website, which is humanelement.com, uh, a couple of products that I have. I am an author on videohive.net, and I sell After Effects templates on there. So uh, it would be great you can check those out, and maybe there's something that you might find be useful for you. And uh, this will definitely help me uh, make some more tutorials in the future.